My last video on the UPC code generated a fair amount of controversy as I attempted to explain the technical aspects of why I didn't think it was the mark of the beast or that the embedded arrangement of the notorious guard bars represented a 666. This is why I am showing you this. It is a 95-bit binary data stream that represents one entire UPC label scan. What we are actually seeing here are the ones and zeros representing each bar and space on a UPC code label. I'm showing you this because I want you to see in raw machine language what the UPC code reader sees as it scans a barcode before any processing or decoding is performed. This is sort of a DNA of a UPC scan. Now each one and zero of this binary data stream is integral in determining the precise value of each UPC digit. And now perhaps we can begin to make this whole concept clearer to our own eyes. For example, let's distinguish the first few UPC numbers from the bit stream. Here, the first guard bar is discernible along with these seven bit combinations, which are actually the binary code for each UPC number. This seven space requirement is what's needed to precisely decode each digit of the UPC. If we remove any bits here, even the zeros, we have an invalid scan. And here is a number six. It may not look like the pattern you would expect for a six, but we have to understand that each UPC number can be either of two bar space relationships, and it's dependent on its location in the label. And only one of these represents 50% of its possible appearance. So these are both a UPC 6. Here also, the infamous guard bars. Let's have a look at them now. 101, 01010, and 101. Keep in mind that these are binary numbers. They represent the actual bars and spaces. Black equals 1 and white equals 0. If we drop bits off of these numbers, we change their value. Not long ago, I got a comment on my earlier UPC video in which the person claimed that they had a letter from the Australian government verifying that all the UPC guard bars were of the same value. I assume he means a six, and that he was ready for a debate. I replied with a request that he share the letter with us, maybe in PDF or JPEG form, of course with a name and address of the letter's author, so we could verify it. Shortly after, he removed his comment. Why? I don't know. Maybe it was this. Although these guard values all contain a 101, the center guard is a different binary value from the other two, and therefore the machine does not see them as the same value. And in fact, it doesn't. To the UPC scanner, it knows that this number means product code end, manufacturer code begin rather than start or stop. If we convert a binary 101 into decimal, we get a 5. If we convert a binary 01010 into a decimal, we get a 10. And even if they're looked at in decimal, we have a 101 and a 1010. Now I know that the 101 or the black, white, black is an important cornerstone for the argument in favor of the 666 UPC label. But clearly, we've seen that seven binary digits must be present to specify any number in a UPC. And if these patterns don't make a UPC value, does this value equal six in any manner or system? The embedded UPC 666 is a very culturally popular notion and can make sense at a glance if we're unaware of how the UPC system really works. And if the importance is shifted completely onto the visual representation of 101 or black, white, black, can we really trust our eyes to always know a 6 from other numbers or even other combination of numbers? And at what point? Does this become a UPC Rorschach test? 
where we clearly see what it is we're looking for.